Welcome to Vigorous Training. I'm Coach Steve and this is Back Day and Traps. So I start my workout off with pull-ups because if I do them at the end of the workout, I can't really do as many reps. So I'd rather just walk into the gym and get started. So this is cold. I didn't do any warm-up sets. Just walk into the gym, start with pull-ups. Usually get about six reps, maybe eight, maybe 12 on a good day. You know, I'm 107 kilos right now and it's still pretty humid in Thailand. So I do uh, as many partials as I can, and then later on I do a second set just to get everything nicely warmed up for the real back workout. I always angle my feet backwards and squeeze my glutes a little bit because that allows me for a great contraction in the lower back and lower lats. And that way I just uh, warm everything up uh, nice and fast and nice and evenly. And then I can get started with the real workout. Now my left forearm was bothering me a little bit so I didn't go uh, crazy heavy on everything and I felt that you know I left a few reps in the tank because it was bothering me so this is the best I could do for the day. First exercise is underhand easy bar rows. I perform this like a pendlay row so I'm almost horizontal to the floor and I'm always touching the plates to the floor and then I start rowing into my stomach so I'm basically horizontal, not, not 100%. I try to keep everything as stationary as possible because this is how I feel everything the most and the best in my lats and rhomboids and my upper back. And I really need to work on my posterior chain because I always feel that my lower back is my weakest link in stiff-legged deadlifts, deadlifts or, or any other back movement. So that's why I prefer to do these pendlay rows because that really puts a lot of emphasis on my upper back. Easy warm up one plate, another feel set with one and a half plates and then I did two plates which felt pretty good and with two plates I got six reps so I decided to increase it from there. It's always a little bit tricky because these easy bars they have a tendency to roll out of your hands on heavier weights and in the middle of the set I realized that I wasn't really getting a good contraction in my lats and my back and I blamed the uh, straps for that so i decided to do another set obviously i was pretty fatigued by the time so another set without the straps only got three reps but uh, hey it is what it is i think uh, the next workout i'll just make sure that i don't fatigue myself too much on the previous sets and then uh, go straight to two and a half plates and just hopefully get like four or five or six reps out of that set this is dumbbell row again i do this all the way to the floor my torso is basically horizontal I get a much better contraction in my upper back and uh, lats, rhomboids, traps, and maybe a little bit of rear delts that way. I always try to make sure that I don't recruit lower back too much because if I do that, I get a, a nasty lower back pump and I try to maintain my lower back strength for the days where I use it um, as an ancillary muscle. So for like stiff legged like deadlifts and uh, you know squats, I also use lower back. So I try to make sure that it's not too fatigued in those days, because back I have enough of it to be honest. And uh, adductors, hamstrings, and quads is definitely something I still want to improve. So on the dumbbell rows, I worked my way up to 65 kilos, and on the right side it went pretty smooth. So I got about five six reps, but then on the left side because my forearm was bothering me, I only got four. I think three or four reps. So, you know, it is what it is. You don't want to push it too much. And especially when your forearm is bothering you, you kind of lose the contraction in your back. And the body is kind of stubborn that way. So when you feel a little bit of pain, you know, you get your first two or three reps in, everything is nicely on the back and then your forearm starts bothering you and you lose the complete contraction of your back. So I decided to put it down and call it a day for this exercise. Third exercise is decline pullovers. And I really like to do it like this because it gives you about two, three more inches range of motion and a very good contraction on the lower lats. Whereas with normal pullovers over the bench, you kind of lose that contraction once you go over your head. But here you can pull it a little bit further to almost chest height. And that uh, just, you know, two inches, you know, two extra inches of range of motion, guys. It really makes the world a difference. But you got to make sure that you put this ab bench on a little block. Because the bigger the weights get, the less range of motion you get. You know, a 30 kilo dumbbell is obviously a little bit smaller than a 40 kilo dumbbell. So you still end up hitting the bottom. I think you got about four or five reps on this working uh, set. And um, yeah, 40 kilos is pretty heavy, especially if you haven't done that in a while. And now halfway through the workout, I'm completely drenched in sweat, um, which is great because once you're warmed up at the muscle factory, you stay warmed up. It just looks like you uh, spend an hour in the rain. 
After four free weight exercises, I felt like I deserved a little bit of a machine uh, action, so I decided to use this hoist machine. It moves all over the place, but I try to keep my shoulders and my back stationary. And that way I still get the best possible contraction, even though I'm uh, very pre-fatigued, obviously. Four plates doesn't feel as heavy as it looks. It's a, it's a relatively easy machine to use. After that, I went to Dumbbell Shrugs. It feels great on the traps. It's uh, my favorite trap exercise. It's always a bit hard to get it in dumbbells in and out of the rack, because if you shrug right in front of the rack, I always end up hitting the rack. So again, 65 kilos, unrack it, walk back a little bit, get into position, do as many reps as you can, and then you start to use a little bit of bias just to pull the, your shoulders and traps into your ears. You still get an awesome contraction. Um, it just doesn't look as uh, smooth and as clean as it should be. And then after you've gone completely to failure, you have to find some sort of way to get them back into the rack. I uh, used to drop them on the floor, but I don't want to do that anymore. Second trap exercise is this machine and i have no idea what it's called it's it's multifunctional you can do many many different things with it bulgarian split squats uh, stiff legged deadlifts and obviously use it as a shrug machine however this machine was not designed for guys like me who are going to load it up with uh, a gazillion plates so it's a little bit extra work just to make sure this machine stays intact and i think we did a working set with uh, four and a half plates per side which doesn't really count because it's the weight is halfway you know between your hands and the pivot on the machine so four and a half plates is probably uh, two two and a half two and a quarter something like that last exercise of the day is cable shrugs i always pass this machine on the way out of the gym and uh, when i feel good when i feel still energetic with one or two sets left in the tank i just uh, do the full stack and do cable shrugs which feel great Hope you guys learned something new today for your back and trap workout. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.